good morning welcome back to another weekly vlog and i'm not starting in my office this week which feels very very strange um but yeah we have decided well we my dad asked if i wanted to go out to our churchyard which is five minutes down the road um i know that sounds a bit weird but basically it's just a really pretty place especially in spring when all the flowers are coming out he said it looks amazing at the moment and he asked if i wanted to come down and see it so um i said yes because i haven't left the house for anything apart from a medical appointment since January I think I think that was the last time I went out for a walk um, to see the Covid rock snake um, and it's nearly April now and I'm just going mad <laughs> um, so I thought I'd say yes because it's quiet and yeah I thought it felt it felt like a kind of safe-ish thing to do um, I mean shielding technically finishes I think on the 1st of April um, but I'm kind of just I'm gonna just take it slowly and see how I feel and also what the kind of numbers are doing and stuff but I felt like this was something that I could do where I wouldn't really see anybody else so yeah we're gonna go and just have a little look around at the flowers and just appreciate being outside for a bit um, we're just getting petrol because got in the car and realised that I have no petrol um, so dad's just sorting that out for me and then we're going to head down to the church get my wheelchair out and just have a little wonder and look at the flowers and appreciate the sunshine um, so yeah I'll take you along with me seeing some of the video from when I went down to the graveyard it was really pretty um, I don't know it just felt so nice to like feel the Sun on my face and it was so peaceful and quiet there just listening to the birds it was like there was a lot of noisy birds but it was lovely just hearing them singing and seeing some of the spring flowers so um we we're a bit late for crocuses because usually like it's just carpeted in like beautiful crocuses um but there were still quite a few like spring flowers loads of daffodils um some hyacinths um primroses and then like, they've got like a big magnolia tree which was like i wouldn't say it was in full bloom but it was like just starting to come out um which looked really really pretty and it was just really nice. My brother came down and met us there, which we're now allowed to do. Um, so as of today, um, the you can meet in groups of up to six or two households. Um, so I think if it's two households, it can be more than six as long as like those two groups are from two households. Um, so yeah, it was nice to sort of... I mean, my, my brother literally, I think he was driving back... Um, he left his iPad at work so he had to go and pick it up and he was driving back and he just dropped in and came out into the graveyard as well and just came and had a little chat and 
it was just really nice um there was nobody else there it was just so quiet and peaceful and lovely and yeah just a really really nice start to the week especially you know when i haven't been out for quite a long time um apart from going to medical appointments which isn't massively exciting and you know you kind of get in the car drive to where you're going go in the hospital and then come back again it was so nice to just be out in nature and enjoying it so yeah really enjoyed that and I'm hoping that I can start just getting out a little bit more for sort of little walks and things like that um I kind of feel not too bad about that kind of stuff I have got a hair appointment booked in for I think it's in a couple of weeks time um to get my hair cut and I'm just going to kind of see how things go and how I feel about it um I mean I do I ideally I really need to get my hair cut it's just getting a bit too long for me to manage um I mean I actually quite like it at this length but I just struggle with washing it and drying it and stuff so it does need cutting um so yeah that's like the one thing that I've got booked in um where I would actually have to see people kind of more close up so We'll see how things go with that, but um, I thought I would just chat to you about the rest of the week because I didn't get to do that this morning. Um, so this evening I've got a virtual council meeting. Um, apart from that, I haven't had anything else on today because, well, I knew like when I, if I went out this morning, I'd probably feel quite tired this like this afternoon. So that's why we chose to do that today because I didn't have anything else on. Um, tomorrow I have got a phone call with my GP um, so I got a call from the doctor's surgery last week um, saying that I was due for a medication review um, I don't really know how often they do them I I think that, like up until now my medication reviews have just been done during like normal appointments because I saw my GP quite regularly anyway so she would often just do it I think while I saw her but I haven't had one I don't think I've had one probably since um Covid and stuff so I probably am due one so they put me in for an appointment tomorrow morning I don't really know what it's going to consist of because there's not really a huge amount to review because my GP doesn't really control much much of my medication like most of the medication that I'm on has come from being recommended by consultants so um I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens um I'm kind of hoping I can have a chat with her just about general health and how things are going as well um we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah that's all I've got tomorrow um and we haven't got Noah tomorrow um because my brother's not working so um he's gonna do pick up and whatnot at, at nursery at preschool even he doesn't go to nursery anymore Wednesday we will have Noah um he'll be at preschool but we'll have him Thursday um we'll have Noah again but he'll be at preschool also the Easter trail that I am organizing starts on Thursday so I need to make sure I've got everything ready for that um we've got some decorations to put outside in our garden which I'll show you some point this week and then I just need to get like the maps and things ready to send out so that people can start doing the trail Friday is Good Friday um, I don't know whether I've got a council meeting on Friday morning um, with it being Good Friday I, I don't know whether Good Friday is a bank holiday or not um, but I've possibly got a council meeting on Friday uh and then saturday haven't got anything and then sunday is easter sunday um although we don't have anything particular planned for that um oh i did miss out actually i think on thursday my brother sister-in-law and niece are going to come over um because you can now meet um outside which includes private gardens um so i think they're going to come over and sit in the garden and we can actually see them in person for the first time in quite a while um it was my brother's birthday at the weekend and he just said that he's fed up of doing zoom and as this like new change in the rules was coming he said why don't we just come over and sit in the garden and 
we can do like have a little celebration that way so i think they're going to come over sometime on thursday morning possibly um so yeah that will be really nice and really nice to see them um and i think the weather's meant to be quite good all this week so that's really good <laughs> because obviously if the weather was rubbish the whole being able to meet outside thing wouldn't really have much effect but yeah so that's pretty much my week um as i said i think shielding finishes officially it's either on wednesday or thursday i can't remember but i one i wasn't officially told to shield anyway um because my conditions didn't come under that category um so i chose to shield just off my own back because i felt that was the right thing for me to do um and yeah i'm just just gonna play it by ear see how things go um i feel like i need to start getting out a little bit for my mental health um it's funny i didn't i, like, I knew my mental health wasn't great um but going out this morning and just being outside in nature made me realize how much being at home was affecting my mental health and you know it's not like i go out every you know in like normal times it's not like i'm usually like going out and doing loads of stuff every day because i'm chronically ill and that's not how it works i do spend a lot of time at home but i think just not going out at all i mean to be fair i haven't even been in the garden because the weather's been rubbish i went out there a couple of weeks ago to look at the flowers and that's about it um i think just not kind of being out there and feeling the sun and listening to the birds you know not necessarily going anywhere or doing anything particularly exciting um i think it probably has had quite a big effect on me so i do want to try and start just getting out a little bit for the odd walk or something um, because I think that would be good for my mental health so that's my plan um, I'd be interested to hear what you're planning to do if you've been shielding whether you're going to continue shielding and not go out at all or whether you're going to kind of ease back into things a little bit um, yeah let me know It'd be interesting to hear what other people are doing I am going to do a little bit of stuff on my laptop I need to try and do a little bit of organization for this Easter trail and then I'm gonna have a rest before my meeting this evening good morning I'm having a bit of a dizzy day today um, I don't think it's as bad as it was on Saturday but I do still keep coming over feeling quite dizzy and I'm also having a lot of trouble with like TMJ pain um, it's not fun <laughs> um i keep sort of like massaging like my jaw muscles and stuff but yeah my just my whole face is just really hurting and like all in my neck and stuff as well um which is not much fun i do not know what that noise is uh oh they were having some trees cut down so apologies for the noise outside um so yeah pain is uh pain is not great today um I had a phone call with my GP this morning which was really nice actually I don't think I've spoken to her like on the phone or in person for like over a year now um, she has texted a couple of times with like various issues but um, yeah that was the first time I'd spoken to her in ages and um, I have a really good relationship with my GP I'm, I feel so lucky to have a very understanding and lovely GP um and yeah up until covid i would see her like probably about once a month so it's it's definitely been quite difficult i'm struggling to concentrate with that going on outside um it's definitely been quite difficult sort of losing that continuity of care and you know somebody to go to with symptoms and things like that um but yeah no she she rang um mainly because i had had a phone call to say that i was due for a medication review so she was ringing kind of for that but um she sort of just used it as an opportunity to just catch up she asked how i was doing how i'd kind of been over the last year um we talked about various like consultants and issues and she talked about my leg um asked like various questions about how things were going whether i'd heard anything from certain people and um sort of how my mental health was and stuff it was just sort of a, a nice catch-up 
Um, we went through all my medications. Um, one of them we're going to try reducing, which is um, it's called quetiapine. It's a um, a psychiatric medication, and the idea was to start reducing it last year um, because we're not sure if it's just making me feel more tired and I've been on it for quite a long time so it would be good to know whether I actually still need it um, but then with Covid and everything I just decided that I didn't feel comfortable trying to reduce it when I just wasn't going to be able to kind of access the medical support that I might need. Um, but I chatted to her about that and we're going to give that a try and just see how things go. She's going to ring me again in a month to kind of check in and see how I'm getting on with it. Um, I also just talked to her about how just generally I've just not felt well. It's kind of difficult when you can't really kind of put your finger on like one thing but you just know that you just don't feel well um, and that, that has kind of just seemed to get worse throughout the last year um just i mean it, it's all sorts of symptoms but you know just feeling very very tired and sleepy all the time dizziness feeling faint um just all sorts of other things nausea and various other things like that um so i spoke to her about that and also about the fact that i seem to be getting a lot more bleeding under my skin um so for quite a while I have been getting like, um, I don't know what they're called, but they're like little red blood spots. Um, so like getting little like patches of them under my skin. Um, on like It started on my legs um, and I was kind of, I thought perhaps it was something to do with the surgery. Um, but basically it's just like, it looks like lots of little like pinpricks and if you, if you sort of push it down, they don't go away or anything. Um, so it started on my leg and then it seems to have just kind of spread to happening in other parts of my body and when I went to have a blood pressure check a couple of weeks ago when I got home I noticed that my whole hand and lower arm was just covered in these blood spots which has never happened before um, so I brought that up because I said I just was a little bit concerned and wasn't sure what was going on um, she thinks that it's probably my EDS. She kind of said it It just sounds like a kind of progression isn't the right word because EDS isn't a progressive condition, although a lot of people tend to find that it does seem to just get worse as you get older. Um, but she, she said she thinks it's probably another EDS thing because um, when you've got EDS, you have quite fragile, I mean, everything's quite fragile, but your blood vessels can be quite fragile, so you're more prone to sort of bleeding and things um, but she is going to get me into a load of blood tests um, I think the last blood tests I had were last last July so she said that she wanted to just get me in to do some bloods to just check everything that's going on like blood wise to see if there's any reasons for one just me feeling more unwell and two the bleeding um, so I'm waiting for the surgery to ring to get me an appointment for that and yeah that was about it really it was just it was nice to just to just have a chat with her and to talk to a doctor that I know who knows my history like so well um, you know to just be able to talk a little bit about sort of my mental health and how I've been coping and just just various kind of things um, I found it I found it really useful so that was good so yeah, we weren't going to have Noah today, but my brother realised that he had got his appointment this evening for his second COVID vaccine. Um, if you don't know, my brother's a paramedic, so he gets the COVID vaccine because of his job. Um, and yeah, he had forgotten that he had the appointment. So um, we're going to pick Noah up from preschool and then we'll look after him, give him his dinner and then I think probably Lisa will pick him up because I think my brother's appointment isn't until like half past six or something like that. Um, so yeah, I get to see Noah today which is quite nice. I'm just sat here helping Noah <coughs> with his dinner. No, no but the apple is a apple. Yeah, Barsink, Iggy, Annie, Wake, Grandpa, and Grandpa, Susan. 
He but does. there's nobody at the door. That's right, because sometimes the doggies, they think that they heard somebody at the door, but there isn't actually anyone there. So Grandpa takes them to the front door and shows them that there's nobody there, doesn't he? Yeah. So yeah, I just, um, I said to Noah, um, I said something like, um, oh, how, how do your legs keep going so long? And then I said to him that he kept growing. And what did you say when I said you keep growing? He wish I could stop growing and I could be little forever. <laughs> so he wishes that he could stop growing and be little forever. And then we started talking about Peter Pan, didn't we? Yeah, Peter Pan. Because Peter Pan stays like a little boy forever. So if you were like Peter Pan then, does that mean that you could fly? My goodness, no. <coughs> but, I no. Need, but, but, but I need wings first, don't I? I need the wings. Oh, okay. We'll have to sort that out. <coughs> if I have to fly, I would have to fly in an aeroplane. Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> yeah, because aeroplanes have got wings. That's right. Yeah, that's, really that's pretty much the only way you can fly, I think. Yeah. So yeah. maybe, maybe one day... What? <coughs> we could... You could borrow the aeroplane's wings, that would be interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. But maybe one day you might go on an aeroplane with mummy and daddy and go on holiday somewhere. And my daddy as well. And Ellie, yeah, but Ellie might come on holiday with you. Uh-huh. Where would you go on holiday? Ah, uh, if I... <coughs> if I'm out for my bag. And we'll have to put her straight in the bag. Yeah, because you don't want her to get lost. No. So where do you think you might go on holiday? Where would you like to go? Ah, uh, very tricky, isn't it? Oh, there's so many places to choose from. You could go to France. Ooh. Or Germany. Mm. Or Switzerland. Ooh. Or America. Ooh. Or oh, Australia. That's a really long way, Australia. Yeah, my, my Australia. You're Australia? Yeah. Oh. Would you like to go to Australia? Yours. It's not mine, it's just the world's. <coughs> Australia is all the way around the other side of the world, so it's, it takes a long, long time on, on an aeroplane to get there. Yeah, a young and young and young, young time. Yeah, and you have to go to sleep on the aeroplane. Because <coughs> it's such a long way. Wow, yes. And when you get to Australia, you might see some kangaroos. Boing, 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 boing. Kangaroo, kangaroo has little holes, little <coughs> things up. Yeah, babies. That's right. They've got it's called a pouch on their tummy, and that's where their baby goes. Yeah, yeah. See, so you could see probably see a kangaroo. Oh, they're kangaroos in the zoo. I don't think we've ever seen one. And they're yeah, kangaroos on Winnie the Pooh. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, one called Kanga. Yeah, and the baby's called Roo. I'm raising Damien. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> and Damien could come go in my Australia because yeah, yeah, I'm my family. I'm um, yeah. Well, Maisie's your family because yeah. Maisie's your cousin. Trinity and Jamie are your friends. Mm -hmm. So what you you take them all to Australia with you, would you? Yeah. That would be a nice holiday, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. <laughs> Can I come to Australia with you? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. What about Nanny? Uh, yeah. You can come to my Australia. To your Australia? Yeah. How oh, fabulous. When are we going? Huh? When are we going to go? Uh, wait for Boris to tell us that we're allowed to go on holiday. Mr. Boris says we can't go on holiday at the moment. Do you know who Boris is? Yeah. Who's Boris? <coughs> well, it's a long, long time he's 
boys to finish. It takes a long, long time. For what? For boys to finish. A long, long time. For boys to finish what? <coughs> to finish talking. Oh. It takes a long, long time, doesn't it? Does he talk for quite a long time? Yeah. Oh, okay. It does take a long, long time. And it does finish a young, young time. Oh, what, do you watch him on the telly then? Yeah, on my telly. Oh. And does he say anything interesting? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It is... What day is it today? Wednesday or Tuesday? <laughs> it's Wednesday. I just... I don't know. I just don't feel awake this morning at all. Um, yeah, it's Wednesday, so we had Noah this morning. Um, he doesn't go into preschool until a little bit later, so we spent a little bit of time playing with him. Um, and yeah, once he'd kind of gone off, I sorted out um, putting up all the information for the Easter Trail, which is starting tomorrow. Um, so I'm glad that that's done. The information's out there now. Um, and that's me pretty much done with it so that's good just hopefully people take part and they enjoy it um hopefully i will be able to get out a little bit in my chair to go and have a look um although i think next week the weather's not meant to be as good so it's been really warm the last few days um but next week we have snow forecast so <laughs> who knows um but yeah, I'm hoping I might be able to get out and just see a few of the displays. We've also got to put our display out. Um, we've got some little decorations to put out there, so I need to do that at some point. Um, so yeah, I did that, and I needed to just do a couple of other admin bits, which I did. Um, got dressed, and now I'm in my office, and I am going to do some video editing. I'm still on weekly vlogs. I'm still trying to catch up with myself a bit. Getting there, um, I'm in... March, like the beginning of March now, so hopefully I've only got a couple more to get up before I'm kind of caught up and I can start doing sit down videos again. Um, so yeah, that's my, my, I was going to say my job for the morning, my plan for the morning, um, if I can actually get my brain to work today. Um, and then yeah, Noah will be back a bit later. I'm trying to decide what to have for lunch today, I'm just in one of those moods where I can't decide I, can't, I don't know it's like I'm kind of starting to feel hungry but I don't really know what I fancy um so yeah what are you having for lunch today or dinner um I kind of have my main meal at lunchtime so if you've got any suggestions of some of your favorite foods to eat do let me know because I just I don't know just feeling a bit uninspired at the moment and it can be quite hard to get inspired I think when eating makes you feel ill um, with sort of the gastroparesis and stuff um, it can often cause a lot of pain and nausea and all that kind of stuff so sometimes I find it quite difficult to feel inspired by anything um, but yeah I need to eat so um, if anyone can suggest some things that they enjoy eating do let me know because it might just give me a little bit of inspiration and help me think of something else to cook um but yeah i need to have a think and decide what i'm gonna have i might just have some soup or something um but yeah we'll see anyway i'm gonna get on with doing some of this editing um and then i'll probably check in with you later i need to show you i want to show you the decorations that we're putting outside at some point i'll show you the inside ones as well not necessarily today i'll see how we go so we've just put our easter display out for the easter trail that i've organized I got these on Amazon, they're sort of like, I don't know what you call it, like corrugated plastic, mm. would you say? Um, with a little stick in the back and uh, they've taken over the garden. There is one more thing to come which hasn't arrived yet. I'm hoping it will get here while the trail's happening so that I can put it out. Um, but I'm quite happy with these, I think they'll be fun and hopefully some people will come up and have a look at them. <laughs>
starting the vlog a bit late today um, because this morning we had my brother, sister-in-law and niece over to spend some time with us in the garden which was just lovely. They stayed for lunch and it was just really, really nice to see them in person again um, and to see Maisie, my niece, in person. She's just She's just changed and grown so much and you know we've been talking to them on FaceTime and all this kind of stuff but you don't kind of pick everything up from that it's only when you see them in person that you realize kind of how much she's changed and just grown and yeah <laughs> I don't know in some ways it's sad but I don't know I'm trying to just look at today as a happy day of being able to see them again and to do something that feels kind of normal um so yeah, it was lovely, really nice. We did a little Easter egg hunt in the garden for Maisie, which she seemed to really like. She had a little bucket and she kind of was going around and she'd put one in and then she'd kind of go, any more? And then she'd just carry on like looking and once she'd got them all, um, she still carried on going around saying, any more, any more? Um, and yeah, she was just, she was just really sweet, in a very good mood, very happy, had us all laughing, had a nice lunch. We just had like, um, sort of, crusty bread and cheese and cold meats and potato salad and salads and that kind of thing it was nice nice sort of picky nibbly lunch which was good and yeah it was just a really really nice morning I feel exhausted now I'm not used to doing anything social and it has really wiped me out but it was so worth it um so yeah, we're going to, I, was, I said we're going to, and that's not true. My mum and dad are going to go and pick up Noah shortly um, from preschool. But I thought I would just have a bit of a rest on the sofa while he's not here and while it's quiet. Um, because I'm absolutely shattered and I need a bit of energy so that I can play with him and entertain him again. So that's my plan now is to just crash out, possibly have a little bit of a sleep on the sofa and then hopefully I'll be a bit more awake when he gets home from preschool. So I've had a bit of a sleep, much needed. Um, Noah has been back from school for a while now and he's just eating his dinner. But what did you do after school? Somewhere. Where did you go? To shops. No, you didn't. I did. <laughs> oh, what shops did you go to? Like twice. Yeah. What did, you, what did you buy in Waitrose? Some food, some bananas as well. <laughs> did you maybe go to the Scout Hut on the way home? No. Did you maybe sit on a digger at the Scout Hut? No. You did. <laughs> you did. So they've had a digger up at the Scout Hut doing some work and uh, it was going, well, it was leaving fairly soon. So on their way back from school, they stopped off at the Scout Hut and they let Noah sit on the digger. And that was good fun, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Do you think you might drive a digger when you're bigger? I need someone with me when I... Well, when you get really big, like Daddy, you could drive a digger by yourself if you wanted to. Nanny didn't get this bit. Good nanny. Yeah, nanny cooked, your, <laughs> nanny cooked your pasta. She hasn't given you raw pasta. <laughs> mm. don't, if you don't like that bit, don't eat that bit. Eat a different bit. Can you, can, can you, can you do it with your tongue? But you've just had it in your mouth. I'd really rather not. <laughs> you could do it with this, this bit. Yeah, but you've just had the whole thing in your mouth. I don't really want to put it on my mouth now. This bit. Look. What am I feeling for? If you, if you don't like that bit, don't have that. Eat a different bit. Just leave that one there. That's it. Yeah, these bits are extra yummy. They're a bit extra yummy, are they? <coughs> Apparently when um, he arrived this morning, he saw the de decorations that we'd put outside and Dad sort of pointed them out to him and <coughs> Noah said something like, um, he said, oh yeah, you always have funny things in your garden, don't you? Is that what you said? No. no. That's what Grandpa told me he said. Grandpa told me that you said that we always have funny things in our garden. 
So Noah has just gone home and I wanted to show you this card that Maisie gave me. Um, she gave all of us one um, for Easter that she's made and I just thought it was really cute. Apparently they did it with a fork so I assume they kind of put yellow paint on the fork and then sort of, I don't know, I assume she just <laughs> had a bit of fun sort of painting the uh, little chick and then I think Emma must have drawn the uh, feet and put the googly eyes in the beak on but I just thought it was really sweet I love I love homemade cards from the little ones they just I don't know they're just something special to keep and they always just make me smile so yeah I thought I'd just show you this one because it's another another good one from Maisie so I thought I'd show you what I got for Noah and Maisie for Easter I asked David and Emma and Richard and Lisa whether they wanted me to give them chocolate or not to give them chocolate um, David and Emma said they were happy for Maisie to have chocolate. Richard and Lisa said that they would prefer us not to give Noah chocolate. Um, so for Maisie, my mum picked up a little chocolate buttons Easter egg for me to give her, um, which I gave her today while she was here. Um, and then I'd also ordered a book, which I was really hoping was going to arrive today. Um, it was meant to arrive while they were here, but the time was then pushed back, so it didn't. So I'm going to have to just give it to them when we can next see them um but the one that i picked up for her is this one which is called ollie's magic bunny it's not one that i'd ever heard of before i was just browsing through amazon and i think i typed in like easter books for children and this one came up and it had really good reviews and i thought it just looked really nice i'm i'm a bit of a sucker for like illustrations and pictures and things and i loved like the the gold on it and then it's actually got like gold in the book as well so I don't know if you can see like in that window there um, and I just think I don't know the illustrations are just really pretty um, there's not a huge amount of colour but it's just really nicely done um, and basically she kind of goes out and she loses her bunny and it's kind of all about her looking for her bunny and finding it again and all sorts of things like that um, and yeah, it's just, it's got like these like flecks of gold all the way through it and it's just, it's just a really pretty book. So hopefully she'll enjoy that. She loves reading books, so I'm sure they'll enjoy reading that to her. So that's what I'm giving her for Easter. And then obviously I said that Noah, um, Lisa and Richard had said that they would rather, we didn't give chocolate because... I just don't think they want to have like loads and loads of Easter eggs to go through. Um, so I was like umming and ahhing about what to give him. Um, he's really into The Incredibles and I think I spoke about this a, a few vlogs ago. Um, saying that I was going to see if I could maybe find something like around The Incredibles to give him. But uh, I looked and I just, I just wasn't very inspired. So um, there was a, a baby Jack Jack that could like talk and um, it like changed colour and it did all, all sorts of things like that. But it was quite expensive wherever you looked. I think it was on eBay for slightly less. But um, I was just like, <sighs> to me, it felt a little bit too much for an Easter gift. And I kind of thought, uh, like, how long will he play with it um, before he kind of moves on to like the next... Thing that he likes so I yeah I wasn't keen on that and then anything else there just wasn't a huge amount of incredible stuff around I could there was like some little play sets on Amazon that were just like the figures and I just thought I was like I just don't know they just don't yeah I just didn't feel massively inspired by them so I gave up on the Incredibles idea and I was just like thinking and I was like what does he really enjoy at the moment and one of the things that he really likes doing is playing with play-doh so I thought, okay, let's have a look and see what sort of like Play-Doh sets that they've got. Um, and Play-Doh sets can be quite expensive, so I was like, we'll just we'll just see. And I was looking through them all, and then one came up that caught my eye. It was reduced on Amazon, so I was like, okay, that's good. I think it was about ten pounds, which I was like, yeah, I can I can cope with that for an Easter gift. Um, and so yeah, it is this one, which is a Play-Doh cash register, and. I just thought, well, I was, I read, I, lot of, I often read like a lot of the reviews. I see if there's any videos to kind of show you how it works and stuff. And this one just seemed to kind of give you the most for the money. Um, so for ten pounds, I mean, it's, I think it was originally 
mm, I don't know, about £16 or something like that. Um, but I thought for £10 it was pretty good. So you put batteries in it um, and it makes noises if you sort of like push this little bit here and stuff. Um, and then you get like lots of like these little moulds so you can make like different types of like foods. Um, you can make, um, there's like this mould here that you can make little coins and like notes. So you, you've got money made out of Play-Doh. Um, you've got like a little shopping basket. Um, and then the till actually kind of works, you know, so the drawer will come out and everything. I know it's not like particularly Eastery, but I wanted to just get something that he would enjoy for, you know, months or years or however long. So that's Noah's Easter gift. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you, which is not an Easter gift, it's something for us to have here, is a book that I ordered um, at the same time as the other two books that I showed you a bit back. Um, but I had to pre-order this one because it hadn't come out yet. And it is a book by somebody that I follow on Instagram called James Catchpole. I'll link his Instagram below definitely check it out if you're not following him already. Um, he's disabled and he talks about family life, disability. Um, he's just a really, really good person to follow if you want, well, one, you want someone nice to follow that posts nice pictures and things like that, but also someone that talks about disability and is really good at kind of you know, raising awareness and educating people and things like that. It's just, just a really nice, nice account to follow and an interesting account to follow. Anyway, he um, has written a book called What Happened to You? And it is a book around a disabled child. And um, let me hold it up and then you can see it. Um, so yeah, it's called What Happened to You? Um, James also has one leg and he's written a book about this child who has one leg called Joe and it's basically a book to read with your children um, or just to read yourself if you want to do that um, to help children understand how to deal with disability um, and so it talks about how like Joe is playing this this pirate game um, and it basically talks about how the children that are sort of playing around him deal with his disability. So to begin with, they they just comment on his disability. They comment on the fact that he's only got one leg. They ask him what happened to you, which is anybody that's disabled or has a chronic illness or something will know that that is a pretty standard question that you get asked. I mean, I. I've lost count of the number of times strangers have said to me, what happened to you? What have you done to yourself? What, you know, oh, how did you end up in the wheelchair? Questions like that when they don't even know you, it's just an automatic question that people ask. And so this book is to try and help children understand that that's not the first question that you should ask somebody. Um, and so, yeah, it basically just talks about the fact that these children keep asking these questions and they make these assumptions about what might have happened to him, you know, why he only has one leg. And um, it talks about Joe's reaction and how he feels about being asked that question all the time. Yeah. I just I just think it's going to be a really important book to read with children to help them understand how to deal with disability. And actually, I think it could help a lot of adults as well. Um, and there's actually a little bit in the back here um, for the adult that's reading with the child um, to talk about, like to help them discuss with children, like how how do you deal with a disabled person? Um, so it says, dear adult, does your child want to know everything about every disabled person they see all at once and at top volume? Because, you know, children ask questions, that's what they do. And there's nothing wrong with children asking questions. It's helping them to understand how to ask those questions and in what situations to ask those questions. But yeah, I just, I really wanted to talk about this. I'm not, it's not an ad or anything like that, but I saw, um, I follow James and I saw him, you know, talking about writing this book. And as a disabled person, I just think it's a really, really important book. And I hope that a lot of non-disabled parents and children will read this and just understand a little bit more about how to deal with disability. So I'd really recommend it. It's on Amazon. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. Um, 
and yeah let me know what you think of it because I think it's a really great book and I think it's something that we need to see more of so those are my things to show you I I really shouldn't go to sleep I'm I had a sleep earlier when Noah was at preschool but I just feel like I've hit a wall <laughs> um so I might just have a little like short nap um so that I can get myself a little bit more energy to carry on again um that's that's a, that's a theory we'll see how we get on that's that's my problem I fall asleep and then I find it hard to wake up but I might just have a little bit of a rest and then I've got various other things that need to be done so that's my plan for the rest of the day good afternoon sorry I haven't actually filmed anything today hello Alfie hello darling um yeah I haven't actually filmed anything today so far it's just been a pretty quiet day I have felt very tired after yesterday I think um I kind of assumed that I probably would because we just did a little bit more yesterday with having my brother and sister and niece round in the morning and so yeah I kind of assumed that today would be a bit of a kind of recovery day because that's usually how it works um but yeah not really been much to film to be honest I had a lie-in um slept until quite late and then it just took me a long time to kind of get myself ready and going and dressed and <laughs> ready for the day um, but I did manage to finish editing a weekly vlog so that's exporting and that's pretty much my achievement of the day <laughs> so yeah I'm now just having a little rest on the sofa I need to get my hair washed um, which my mum's going to help me with in a little while so I'm just having a rest now so that I've got a bit of energy for getting that done um, and yeah that's pretty much what my day is going to consist of um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what else there's going to be to film, um, but if there is anything I will come back on, but for now I'm just going to have a bit of a rest and hopefully get a bit of energy so that I can get my hair washed. Good morning. Sorry that there was barely any footage yesterday. I just had one of those days where I seemed to spend more, day, more of the day asleep than I did awake. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was just, it was just a bit of a a down day um just needed to rest and not do a huge amount um but yeah i feel okay today i still feel quite tired but a little bit better than i did yesterday um i am just trying to get a weekly vlog uploaded i just want to finish writing a blog post i don't know whether i'm gonna have time to finish it today or not i'll see how we get on um we've got noah and uh, richard and lisa coming over this afternoon um, so that we can do a little Easter egg hunt for Noah in the garden, which I think he's quite looking forward to. We spoke to him about it earlier in the week and he's very excited about Easter and stuff. So, um, yeah, we're going to make his a little bit harder than we made Maisie's um, and hopefully he'll have a good time. The only thing is it's not particularly warm today, so we're going to have to like wrap up warm and make sure we uh, <laughs> don't blow away because it's quite windy. But hopefully it'll be something nice to do with him, so that should be good. Um, apart from that, don't really have any other plans today. Um, well, my mum and I are going to make a risotto for dinner. I'm not doing the butternut squash one this time. We've decided to branch out and try something different. So we're going to go for a mushroom risotto. I was like going through Pinterest trying to find a recipe and I found it really difficult to find one that I liked the look of because a lot of the recipes that I found were like literally, I don't know, like rice, mushroom, and stock and there was like nothing else in them and I was just like eh, that's gonna be a bit like I don't know a bit boring and a bit tasteless um and I don't know we quite like quite like a creamy risotto or something like that so I had a look and I eventually found one that um included like I think some parmesan and a bit of cream and stuff so we're gonna give that one a try see what it's like we can always change things if we don't like it the next time so um yeah pinterest is like where i go for recipes for anything that's just my my go-to place um but yeah we're going to try the mushroom risotto today um i'd like to try some other types of risotto as well so if there's a particular type of risotto that you enjoy do let me know because it's good to have some more ideas um but yeah that's the plan for this evening 
Um, and yeah, apart from that, just, just a fairly quiet day. So I'm gonna get on with trying to get this vlog up and get some more writing done uh, before Richard and Lisa get here. So I've just got a delivery in the post from Bloom and Wild. I actually thought it was something that I'd ordered for my mum. Um, so she opened it to begin with and then we realized that it was actually for me. Um, and it is, well, I haven't actually opened the flowers yet, but apparently it is this bouquet that my friend Lydia has sent me for Easter, which is very kind of her. It looks really, really pretty. I really like um, Bloom and Wild. I've used them quite a few times. And you get like this little booklet um, and it tells you what flowers you've got and how you can kind of get them to look better after you've taken them out of here. And then it talks to you about sort of how to prepare them. So the way you should trim them, um, and taking the leaves off and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got this bit here that teaches you how to sort of arrange, well, the best way to arrange them um, and what they'll look like in a few days. And then these are the sorts of things it teach, tells you to do to kind of keep them looking good. And also how to take the perfect picture, which I definitely need some help with because I don't seem to be very good at getting pictures of flowers. Um, and then, oh, if I can actually open the page, uh, yeah, it even tells you sort of like what you can recycle and things like that. And then there's a little thing that you can feed uh, feedback on and take the have the chance to win six months of flowers, which I might give a go. But yeah, they've got some really really nice flowers and they seem to last quite well as well. And once they've all sort of like opened, they always look really beautiful. So. I'm going to open these up and we'll put them in a vase and I'll show you them once they're kind of perked up a little bit. Good evening. I haven't really checked in much with you today. Um, we had Richard, Lisa and Noah here this afternoon so that we could do a little Easter egg hunt for Noah in the garden. Um, my sister had written out clues to sort, of sort of like saying like where does grandpa keep his tools and things like that. Um, and then Noah had to like work out where it was and he would go over there and there would be like some eggs there and put them in his little basket and yeah he seemed to have a good time and um, he was getting like really into it he was like where's the next clue where's the next clue um, although he did want to eat like all the chocolate eggs um, afterwards so we had to <laughs> stop him from doing that um, and yeah my mum gave him his little like Easter basket and I gave him the Play-Doh till that I showed you a few days ago um, and they all seemed to go down quite well so yeah that was nice it was a bit cold but we did all right <laughs> um, I have just been having a bit of a nap this afternoon um, and watching the last Saturday night takeaway at the moment and yeah my mum and I are going to start cooking the mushroom risotto so I thought I would show you how it goes <laughs> fingers crossed that it goes okay um, and yeah Rosie's giving me a, a funny photo. Rosie doesn't like mushroom risotto or anything with vegetables in it. Um, so she's having something different. But yeah, we're going to start cooking it now. So I thought I'd take you through it and I'll give you feedback once we've eaten it to let you know what it's like. So the recipe we're following is from this website called Pretty Simple Sweet. I will link it below. And so far we've got some onions and garlic sautéing until they are soft. We're then adding the rice and we have to mix it until it's coated and then I think, what does it say next? <laughs> uh, yeah, add the rice and stir quickly to coat it with oil, heat it through but don't let it brown. Ooh, the saucepan keeps moving. <laughs> just added some dry white wine and we've got to stir it through and then just wait until it's been absorbed by the rice. Um, this wine actually, I'm not a big drinker, um, but this particular wine that my mum picked up um, is one that I found on the Waitrose website and it's really really nice. I'll show you what it is later. Um, but yeah, I think I might find a wine I actually like. Mushrooms have just gone in and we've got to mix them up until they are nicely combined with the rice. 
And then this is the bit that takes the longest. Um, you're now adding the stock a small amount at a time until it's been absorbed each time and then you add some more. Um, it could take, I think it says about 20 minutes to do this and in our experience doing it slowly works best because if you try and put it in all at once it just doesn't seem to taste the same. So all of the stock is now nicely absorbed in. I have to thank my mum for that because I can't stand up for 20 minutes. Um, we're now adding some butter. It has different amounts depending on how rich you want it. We've kind of just guesstimated a little bit so we'll see how it is after this, whether we need to put any more in. Um, so we're going to do that and then we need to also put in, I think the parmesan, where's the instructions gone? Uh, yeah, the parmesan and then the cream and I think we're about done. Okay, it seems to call for quite a lot of parmesan but we're going to go with it. Quite like a cheesy risotto so it's meant to be half a cup which is uh, about 100 grams so there we go there's the cream we're going to stir that in and then it will be ready so this was the wine that we chose i think it was about 6.99 it is an australian south australian wine I don't know much about wine, I'll be honest with you, um, but apparently it's a dry, crisp wine and it tastes really nice and it's vegan, so yeah, I'm going to enjoy a little glass, well I don't drink that much, so I'm going to enjoy a little tiny glass with my no. risotto. So here is the finished result, I mean it doesn't look particularly exciting, um, but then that is mushroom risotto for you. Um, feedback so far, my mum thinks it's a bit too cheesy, so we could try putting slightly less parmesan in next time. My dad said that he seems to think it's okay, so I'm going to give it a try now and see what I think. Good afternoon and happy Easter if you celebrate Easter, or if not, I hope you're just having a nice a nice day with some chocolate. Um, yeah, it's the afternoon, I didn't film much at all this morning, or anything this morning actually. Um, we had a fairly quiet morning, watched the virtual church service. Um, it's kind of virtual now, like so they can meet now in the church, um, but you kind of have to book your place. So I think they can have 30 people, um, but they're still filming it to go online. So the people that can't go can still watch it. So we watched it, um, did breakfast, sorted my medication out for the week ahead, um, and then just had a, yeah, a very quiet chilled out morning and we just had a roast dinner together um, which was very nice and now I am feeling pretty tired to be honest um, so I think I'm gonna have a bit of a rest now um, I've got the Simpsons movie on because that's on TV and I love it so that's on the telly um, but I thought I'd just show you our Easter decorations because I haven't actually got around to showing you them yet so I'm going to show you them and then I'm going to have a little rest and then I don't know we'll see we'll see after that <laughs> Say something that will make my day Cause these memories of her won't go away They're haunting me so I can't sleep She was a pretty little liar who cut me deep Cause she left me here alone Now my bed feels just like cobblestone Oh, oh. Did she go? Oh, oh, was I supposed to know that she'd leave? Was I too naive to think that she'd be the one? Whoa, oh, oh. why did she go? I met her back in 2005. It was her crooked little smile that caught my eye. And it was her and I She promised me to never leave my side But she left me here alone I know it's dumb I still check my phone Cause 
can't move on Whoa. Why did she go? Whoa. Was I supposed to know that she'd leave? Was I denied to think that she'd be the one? Whoa. Just tell me why did she go? chilled out day not doing a huge amount to be honest um and yeah i feel like i needed it um so i had a nap after lunch um and then what did i do <laughs> uh, oh yeah harry potter was on tv so i ended up watching that and um i spent some time trying to reply to some texts and stuff that needed replying to i'm uh, I see these like memes going around sometimes about um, like a, a type of person who you are um, and it's like um, you know oh I'm really sorry but I'm that kind of person who like who will read your message and then think about think sort of oh I'll reply to it later and then it's like three weeks later and I'm feeling really terrible because I haven't replied and I'm like I can just relate to that so much because I tend to like if a message comes through I tend to not read it until I know that I can sit down and reply to it properly because I know that if I read it I will then forget to reply to it because it's not kind of flagged up as like a message that needs replying to um but I can't like sometimes like I don't know I find that I have to be in the right like headspace and energy space to be able to sit down and reply to some like it depends what the message is but like if it's like a, a longer message and it needs a longer reply I do need to be in like, you know, the right place energy wise to do that. And then sometimes I do just find that, you know, you kind of think, yeah, I'm going to reply to that. And then a few weeks have gone by and you think, oh God, I haven't replied. And then you feel absolutely terrible because you haven't replied for so long. And then I just get into this like <laughs> spiral of like, you know, oh, it's been three weeks, I haven't replied. And then you feel so terrible about that, that you don't reply because you feel terrible. And then even longer goes past and you get to a point where you're like, oh my God, like I can't reply to this message because it's been so long and I feel so terrible. Like such a, I feel like such a bad friend. Um, and like, I know like a lot of my friends understand that. And, and a lot of my friends are very similar. You know, they, they have similar chronic illnesses and stuff. And, um, I, I don't judge somebody for taking a while to reply to a message that's just how life is sometimes but I judge myself um, so anyway I sat down and just replied to a whole load of messages while I watched Harry Potter um, so yeah I feel a little bit more like on top of things now um, I've still got like Instagram messages and YouTube comments and um, Facebook messages and stuff that I need to reply to and I just feel like I just need to do a few at a time and I'll get there at some point <laughs> um, but yeah I did that um, did some little like admin -y bits it's just been one of those like paperworky admin type days um, but it's been alright actually because I've just done it while I've been sat here um, watching stuff on the telly I yeah watched a bit of Harry Potter um, and then I watched something that I had recorded from Christmas, which was a Cinderella pantomime um, done by Zoom with like different celebrities. So I watched that. And then I've watched a couple of episodes of uh, 24 Hours in Police Custody, which I really love. It's one of my favourite programmes. Um, 
I think there's a new series starting. And the one I watched was one that was from a little while back, but I think there's, yeah, a new series that's just started. So yeah, we'll have plenty more of those to watch. And yeah, I've just been, just been trying to get bits and bobs done really from the comfort of the sofa, which has been quite nice. Um, and I've just opened some post um, that had been building up for a couple of days. And I thought I'd just show you a couple of the bits that were in there. There are quite a few, well, I say quite a few. There are a few Easter cards, um, which were very nice. I sent my Easter cards out and I've had a few back. So I've got like this one, got a little beautiful one, which is quite nice. And then a couple of other little ones as well. So I shall put those up on the mantel. Mm, I might not fit on the mantelpiece, but I'll put them up somewhere. Um, and then... There are a couple of like medical letters which were not very interesting. Um, and then my friend Lydia, um, she had already sent me some flowers. Um, so, I mean, I didn't expect anything, but she'd already sent me um, a lovely bunch, bunch of bloom and wild flowers, which are now on the windowsill. Um, but she also sent me a tin of mini eggs, which I love. You can't beat mini eggs, can you? Um, and I think we are thinking of doing some um, baking doing some little like um what do you call them like the cornflake cake easter nest type things so these will come in very useful for putting on top of those so thank you Lydia if you're watching um she's also sent um she said she told me she was sending these actually her sister um has just had another baby well not just had another baby she had another baby fairly recently um, and she said she had some clothes that she wanted to pass on to my sister so we've got some clothes in here which I will have a little look through and then pass over to Rebecca to have a look through looks like there's some Disney stuff in there which I'm sure Rebecca will love um, and then the other thing was um, a Disney order so was it this week or last week I can't actually remember um, but anyway um, some new bits came out which um, I quite liked the look of so um, there was this which is I think it's the 2021 like Disney store opening ceremony key but it's the pin version so you can get the key if you go to a Disney store and you're the first in line and you open it which I can't imagine I'll ever be because we don't have a Disney store near us um, but yeah, this is the pin version, which is really pretty actually. So I'll see if I can get it to zoom in. Oh gosh, it's gonna, is that gonna focus? Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, it's got glittery bits. I like the castle bit. It's kind of like, I don't know whether it's shaded or holographic or something. And then it's got little fireworks along it as well, um, which is quite pretty. Anything that is still available, I will link below in case you're Disney mad like I am and I'm interested in looking for them um but yeah I thought that was really pretty and I tend to collect the key pins and the keys and various other pins um so I went for that and then they also brought out this set of keys um it says it's a special edition and I can't remember what they called it I'm just trying to remember Basically, it's like three keys um, of Mickey Mouse kind of through his like journey, I suppose you'd call it. So um, let's see if I can get this to focus without. <laughs> uh, oh, no, not helpful when it's in a box. Here we go. So, yeah, you've got um, Mickey Mouse as Steamboat Willie. Um, you've got the sort of Fantasia one and then, I don't know what this one is, oh it's like, I don't know, maybe it's just like the more um, recent one, I'm not sure, anyway, there's lots of like different Mickeys on there from sort of through the ages of Mickey and I just thought it was a really nice set to have, I mean at the same time as these came out the Small World 55th anniversary key came out um, and I really like it actually I mean the small world is um, I don't know I feel, I feel like it's like a love-hate ride like it, it's pretty iconic and um, you know the song is just 
<laughs> it's like an earworm isn't it you you just get it in your head um and you know when i have been to disney um we've been twice and we made sure we rode it both times um but at the same time it is quite an annoying song and i'm not sure i would say it's my favorite ride but it's definitely something that i kind of feel like i have to do if i go there um but anyway i actually really like the key so this is what the key looks like let's see if we can get this to focus there we go so this is the key um it's quite detailed this one so you've got it's a small world here um and then you've got the castle here with um what looks like the outside of um the ride then you've got this bit here which has got lots of the little sort of people on it in different outfits and then this bit here has got uh I think it all says hello in different languages, which is quite nice. And I quite like the tag as well. I thought that was quite pretty. So yeah, that was my Disney order. Um, I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to display my keys. Uh, yeah, I haven't quite got that far yet. I just, I need to kind of have a little look, I don't know, on Instagram or something to see if there's anyone that's posted pictures of like how they display their keys so if anyone that's watching this has collects the keys and displays them in some way let me know because i'm just a bit at a loss at the moment of how to actually display them and make them look nice so yeah that was that was my post opening today um and now i think i'm just gonna go and get myself a cup of tea and maybe watch a little bit of youtube before i head to bed so i will end the vlog here i hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog if you have and you'd like to see more from me please give me a like and subscribe to my channel also hit the notification bell that means you'll get notified every time i upload a video so you don't miss anything leave me a comment let me know how you're doing what you've been up to this week anything else that you want to leave a comment about do do just yeah leave something below and say hi and i'm getting around to replying to comments as quickly as i can i'm trying to catch up on sort of past comments that i haven't replied to yet and it just varies of how quickly i can go depending on what my health's doing and stuff but i will get around to replying i really appreciate anybody that takes the time to comment um and so yeah if you want to leave a comment that would be lovely also come and follow me on social media my links are in the description below but i will put my instagram and twitter up here those are the two platforms that i'm mainly on so again do come over and say hello and i will reply as quickly as i can and i'll see you in another video very soon bye